All right, welcome back. So we're back out here working on the 657E. Uh, we were out here a few days ago and we uh, torqued the rod cap that we took off and we torqued the main caps that we took off. And we started working on it. We got uh, the spacer plate or the whatever plate that goes above the uh, oil pan on. And then I picked up the oil pan. We went and started cleaning it out and we found a crack in the oil pan. So let me show you guys uh, the, the repair work on that. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell here. It's all white right inside here, but we flip it over. And it had gotten whapped really hard. Uh, there's the belly pan over there. You can see right here in the belly pan, this part's sticking up. So this is supposed to be protecting the engine, and it got hit so hard that it, it bent it up. And this rib across here, looks like right about here, hit that oil pan. And it crap the oil pan so I don't think it was leaking very bad from there but I took it to a weld shop in the, close to where I my shop is and this guy over at Mike's welding over in Temecula uh, real fast turnaround the guy dropped it off in the afternoon and he had it ready the next morning and it also had a spot here where the airline coming from the compressor the steel braided line was rubbing across here and it was probably like this deep it was almost through so he beefed that up too so all right, so we're just putting the cam gear in right now. We've got that lined up. We're just putting, we've got to put the bolts in and torque them. You can tell we already put the front cover on when we're here last. You know, got the motor mount on. All we need to do now is just, you know, torque those bolts, uh, check the backlash, put the cover on, and then we put the oil pan on and hang the uh, the pulley system here for the fan. The fan, you know, mount that, and then the fan's laying right in here. We'll just lift that up with the crane and mount it back to the pulleys once we get that in. And then that'll be it on this one. So we'll be able to start it up. I wasn't planning on doing a video on putting this back together, but I had, um, in the comments, I had people asking me that they want to see it run. So as soon as we get done with this, you know, get done with all this work here, we'll get oil in it, uh, put the, the coolant back in the radiator, and we'll fire this thing up and we'll get it in the video. And then um, we'll do some road testing with it too, so you guys can see this thing move. So, Okay, so here's the bottom of the engine. You can see I put that spacer plate in there. It's like a half inch thick uh, plate. I'm not sure exactly what that does. If it just keeps the, if it supports the block and gives it more support, or if it's just uh, just to keep oil from splashing around. I'm not sure. Usually they're like a thin tin, but uh, what do I know? Um, but this is the first C18 I've worked on. I, I'm usually working on C15s, uh, 3406s, you know, in the past, all the way back to like B346s and B343s. Um, but anyways, you can see we got the oil pump back in there. Uh, I've got the pickup tube in, we got the pressure tube in, those are all tightened up, bolted down, and I've got the pan ready to go, I've got the gasket glued on it, um, I've got this section here all cleaned up, so um, Alex is up there putting a uh, peanut cover on the front of the engine, um, as soon as he gets uh, where he can break away from that, uh, we'll lift it up, put this pan on, then I just need to put the fuel pump gear and put the fuel pump in it, and put the uh, air compressor in. And then, then we'll do the fan and all that stuff. And then we'll be done with this thing in about an hour or so. All right, so I've got the oil pan in place. I still have to hook the drain hose to it, uh, but I'm gonna wait till I get the fuel pump in and the uh, air compressor in, just so I can have more room in here. So here's the adapter, the drive adapter for the uh, fuel pump. Got that in place, I'm just gonna just tighten it down. All right, that's in. Um, now I just gotta put the pump on there and put the compressor in. I think I might put the compressor in first just because that'll be out of my way. I can get up, come up from the bottom to stab it in there and then I can put the fuel pump in. The fuel pump's just hanging here, right here. It's got the hoses on it still. Um, but I've gotta get these nuts off, clean this up, um, put a new seal on the compressor and then I'll go ahead and slide that in place and tighten it down. I'm going to show you guys how to install the front main seal um, with the right tooling. This is very cool. Without the right tooling, I don't think it's possible. And it does have a hole in here in case your crank has a dowel. This crank doesn't have a dowel. So we could just line up these three install holes with any three of the holes that are already in the crank. And then we've got these little short 5 8 fine thread bolts. All right, so I got those lined up. I just have to screw them in. I uh, just use this 3 8 ratchet. I'll screw those in. 
All right, so I've got that part of the installer bolted up. You just snug them up, just tighten up so the thing can't move. And then we're gonna go ahead and get the seal out of the box and put the rest of the installer on and then show you guys how that runs in. So here's the seal for it, the 6069110. And let's look at the seal. So it's got the part number. It shows which rotation, installed dry, so you don't oil it, nothing like that. Yeah, and here's the inside of the seal. So we're gonna lay this up on here. You know, just kind of push that into place, Alex. Just, just by hand, just kind of tap it with your palm. So we got that close, and then we get this part of the installer, and this is going to slide. Sorry about the camera footage. Okay, that's going to go over there over that, that stud, and get that up so it's centered up on the seal all the way around. And obviously that nut goes on. Okay, I'll hold this in place and go ahead and get the wrench and go ahead and crank that in. That's enough. That's a good place. All right, now pull this cup off and we'll see <laughs> see if we did it right. All right, so you can see the seals installed in there. We just need to pull these three 5 8 uh, fine thread bolts out, and then we can get the first the, that section of the installer off. And then this will come right off. Well, sometimes it gets stuck on the crank. See if we can tap that off or something. There you go. And that's it. Um, without that tool, I don't know how you would do it. Um, I'm glad I have the tool. <laughs> guess if I didn't, I'd buy it, but I guess that's why I have one, because I bought one. So now we just have to put the motor mount back in, and then once the motor mount's bolted back on, then we could put the balancer and the pulley back on, and then we can set the engine down back on the mount, and then we can get the, the uh, oil pan back on and stuff, and get this thing finished up. All right, so uh, we've got everything back together on this engine. We've got the oil in it. We've got the, the coolant back in it. The only thing we haven't done is put the pans up because we haven't started it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. Hopefully everything goes good. We don't hear any weird noises. Don't have any leaks. So uh, let's get after it. Go get them, Hot Rod. Go get them. All right, so just going to turn on our battery disconnect switch. One last glance in the engine compartment here to make sure I don't see any water dripping. The only thing that, that we opened up that had water was that bottom hose that we drained it from because for some reason there's no drain plug and the two water lines on the compressor. So I see those aren't leaking, so that's all good. All right, so let's get around here. Got to go with dust in here. Mm. Queer.
up for a few minutes and we'll, we'll rev it up a little bit, make sure everything's all good. And uh, we might take it for that test shot here. Let's pull the pan. Well, we'll pull the one pan up, but before we put the main pan on, we'll take it for a quick test run. Okay, now we scroll through. Here we go. Well, it's RPMs. Yeah, 71 PSI oil pressure. Uh, engine load 20%, zero PSI turbo. Let's go back again. You can hear that turbo bark. I was just shooting video on a 651 in front of me and it's got a power problem. And I could only get up to six or eight PSI on the turbo. And I couldn't even hear the turbo boosting. Um, Cause I was looking at it to, uh, to find out why it's slow on power. And it's got exhaust leaks, really bad exhaust leaks. But this one, you can really hear that turbo bark. All right, so this is it. It has no leaks. There's no coolant dripping. There's no oil dripping. Um, you can see everything we did here. Everything's looking good so far. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up this front pan, and then we can take this thing for a little ride, and uh, then we will have to work on the main pan, which is gonna be a real pain. But all right, so let's go for a test ride. The seat adjusted. Put my seatbelt on.